So in my trip to Italy last month, I was able to venture into the vast expanse of Lombardy, which is located right here. I did what the usual tourist would do and visited the major sites, Milan, Bergamo, and even Cremona. But I was a bit pissed because I didn't have any time to buy Parmesan cheese from Emilia Romana, even though I was only on the other side of the river from it. Literally. Sorry, Lombards. I really love Parmesan. Don't make this into me. Having said that, the priority I gave to Lombardy gave me a glimpse to an interesting fact that seems unique to modern Western European history. So north of the Po River, and squished in between the Alps, you have a huge valley in northern Italy. The Po River Valley. <sighs> Jesus Christ, these names. It's well known for being an industrial belt with its center in Milan, the largest metropolitan area in all of Italy. If you were to include the regions of Emilia Romana, Friuli Venezia Giulia, Piedmont, Liguria, Trento, Veneto, and the Osta Valley, then northern Italy would contribute over 54% of national GDP whilst having around 45% of the Italian population. Hence, industrial conditions like northern England and northeastern France must have been prevalent. Of course, this is also tied to the term the Blue Banana, which is a highly urbanized corridor stretching from northern England through to the Benelux and northeastern France, up the Rhineland, and into the plains of northern Italy. I also like to call it the Golden Croissant. Interestingly enough, a thread was posted on EUpedia, almost mimicking these population patterns, by linking genes and whatnot in order to come up with an individualism versus collectivism map. That is obviously disputed, but it's interesting nonetheless. Now you have a highly industrious super region that engages in the majority of some of Italy's agricultural output, such as with rice and corn. To the naked eye, the uh, high population density would assume a more individualistic character. But surprising enough, it stops once you go off to the countryside due to the agricultural output of the Po River Valley. You see, when venturing through the plains of Lombardy, one can't help but notice randomly placed square structures littered throughout the countryside, as if they were tiny fortresses surrounded by seas of maize. These structures are called Kashinas, and are interesting because they slightly resemble the Russian peasant commune known as the Obshina. A Kashina is defined as a northern Italian rural complex of different buildings surrounding a courtyard which is where the full name Cascina Corte is derived from. But this definition ignores the dynamics about how Cascinas work. They were essentially farm settlements owned by a patrono or landowner who would hire agricultural workers and provide them lodging. They exploded in use by the 19th century and would remain the fabric of Lombard agricultural life up until the 1920s when labor shortages in France prompted mass immigration due to the aftermath of the First World War. Casinas could vary in population, but this one that I visited had between 23 and 24 families living in it. Some even had their own churches and schools, like this. Thus a similar dynamic to Obshinas was introduced, with workers living in a communal setting. But whereas a commune is defined as a small-scale collective organization based on the sharing of wealth and power, possibly also extending to personal and domestic arrangements, Kashinas did not necessarily have that egalitarian element to it. The restrictions on mobility of Russian peasants, whether by law or by landowner, was never replicated in the Kashina. Although having difficulty integrating itself into the liberal Western European economic system, the Kashina nonetheless allowed people the liberty of movement, that's how my girlfriend's grandmother actually emigrated to France. Of course, one would say, Blitz, these Kashinas don't sound like Russian peasant communes at all. If you consider coercion and some forms of power sharing as the criterion, that may be true, but the shared infrastructure of Kashinas negates that criticism. But what I find interesting about the Kashina is that they're even unique 
to Italy. This is because most rural housing in modernity have been single-family units, namely dimor unifamiliari. Some exceptions apply within the rural housing type Maseri, which was more popular in the south, but my findings were inconclusive. It seems Maseri were a mixed bag. In addition, it's hard to guess how seasonal homes were, known as dimor stagionali. But it's also quite interesting how they perfectly line up with the rugged geographic landscape of the Apennines and Alps. Thus, Kashinas were sort of like Russian peasant communes, but you had a landlord instead of a noble, and you could leave your Kashina if you really wanted to. By the 1950s, Kashinas had very few families living in them, and by 1975, they were practically deserted. Nowadays, many have either been demolished or converted into normal housing for locals and agritourists. However, a few still perform agricultural functions like dairy production. It is surely a testament of the intense clash of industrialization with the communal tradition of yesteryear. I'd also like to take the time to thank all my patrons listed below. These videos would truly not be possible without their support. If you'd like to become a patron, please be sure to check the Patreon link in the pinned post and description.